Well, hello everybody, welcome to a, another episode of Coding with Cult. This one's going to be a little different because we're not going to do any coding. So, the Raspberry Pi 400 just got released and I finally got my hands on one. They've been sold out just about everywhere, but I was able to uh, get one from the local micro center. They had exactly two left in stock and I was able to order it for pickup uh, online. I was able to, able to get one. Now, I've loved the Raspberry Pi ever since its first release. I've had one almost almost but not quite since uh, day one of the release of the original Raspberry Pi. And I've owned pretty much every single model of Raspberry Pi ever since then. I've done lots of projects in them and I absolutely love them. I, I think they are um, an, an amazing little device, inexpensive. I think they're awesome for uh, learning and teaching kids how to code. Um, so when, when I was a kid, growing up in the, in the 1980s, we had uh, our microcomputers were a little bit different. Uh, my Commodore 64, which I have one right here. So my Commodore 64, when you turned it on, you didn't have a windowed operating system. You didn't have anything else. It was just a purely text-based operating system and it was ready to be coded right away. In fact, you almost had to learn how to code in order to operate one of these computers. And the language that, the language that you used was called BASIC. And ever since then, as computers became more advanced and got up in the late 80s and 90s, computers stopped coming with a development environment, uh, a language to program them in. And so people stopped learning learning how to code. It became more and more and more difficult to learn how to code as the tools became um, more complicated, they became more difficult to install, more difficult to configure, um, that they, they, it just simply became more difficult to learn how to code if you were a kid, especially a young kid. I, I started learning to code probably uh, 1979, 1980, so I was in the neighborhood of around 10, 11. Then along came the Raspberry Pi, and it was designed to be a, a inexpensive means of teaching kids how to, how to code. So this is Raspberry Pi 400, and what's special about it is that it's an all-in-one device. It comes uh, com uh, mon uh, mounted in a uh, keyboard. All you got to do is plug in a mouse and uh, power supply, and you're, you're good to go. It's ready to go. Um, so we're going to tear into this and see what uh, see what's inside. All right, let's see. A little bit of tape there. We might tear into it if I can. <laughs> All right, let's see here. It's got to just slide out. It has to. There we go. All right. So let's open it up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There it is. There it is. Really nice uh, red color on the, on the back, that Raspberry Pi red. Let's take a look at our ports. We've got uh, the GPIO ports are broken out into, uh, this time it's like a 40-pin uh, uh, IDE cable. Right here is the microSD card, and this one has the uh, microSD card already installed. It's ready to go. All you got to do is plug this thing in and boot it up. You've got uh, the two, I can never remember, I think they're micro HDMI ports. This is the uh, USB-C power port right there. Two USB 3 ports, one USB 2, and then a gigabit Ethernet port. Now this kit right here comes with everything that you need, and it costs $100, which to me is just an absolutely amazing deal. And in fact, the Raspberry 4 that, they come, that this comes with is a little bit more uh, uh, powerful, a little bit faster than the standard Raspberry Pi 4. Now let's take a look at the keyboard. Oh, you know what? This is actually a whole lot better than I thought it was going to be. In reality, I, I could I could use this. Normally, these, I don't know what you call them, almost flat chiclet style keyboards, I do not like them. Um, I, I have keyboards that cost twice as much as this device right here. I, I vastly prefer a good mechanical keyboard, but, um, you know, this is only a $100 device. Oh, and by the way, you can actually get a kit for $70 that just has this. You've got to provide your own mouse, your own power supply. Um, but uh, it, it contains only this. So for really $70, this is not bad at all. It's not something I'd want to use, you know, 
as my regular machine, but this isn't bad at all. Hmm. All right, let's see what else we've got. So then underneath here, ah, the official Raspberry Pi USB-C power supply. Uh, ah, Raspberry Pi mouse. Now the SD card is already installed, but uh, this is a uh, SD card holder. And then below here, you've got the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. Everything you need to know to get started. It's got lessons on Scratch. Uh, I believe it's got lessons on how to navigate around. Yep, how to navigate around the Raspberry Pi 4. See if it's got anything in here about Python. Yes, it certainly does. It's got information about, uh, although I don't know that you can hook one of them, one up, but uh, it's got information about the Raspberry Pi Sense hat. Camera module, which, <laughs> which is once again funny because I don't believe that uh, um, this thing is um, compatible with the camera, camera module. Oh, and then I uh, almost missed this. You have the HDMI cable here. So essentially this kit comes with absolutely everything that you need for a hundred dollars. And I, you know, personally I consider it to be what may very well be the best deal that you can find if you're looking to uh, learn to code or get into the Raspberry Pi. A uh, hundred dollars can't be beat. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to hook it up. Uh, let's boot it up real quick and um, we're going to take a look at um, performance and see if we can also overclock this thing just a little bit. All right, so welcome to uh, the Raspberry Pi 400 booted up. Um, this is not the first time I've booted it up. I went through the complete configuration process, and I've already run uh, sudo apt-get update and apt-get apt upgrade. So I upgraded everything to the latest versions, and I've installed a couple of um, software packages to do a little bit of stress testing. So what I've been doing is I've been stress testing at the base frequency of 1.8 gigahertz, and um, I've got it pegged at 100% CPU, CPU usage on all cores. And I've been running it now for good, oh, I want to say 20, maybe 30 minutes. And uh, it's staying well within a uh, safe range. Uh, we're at 60, we're, we're running right around 61, 62 degrees. And it stayed there um, fairly even for, for quite a while. So well, well within um, non-throttling range. I'm going to overclock this thing to 2.2 gigahertz here in just a minute. We'll see if it stays under 80 degrees. I, I don't have confidence that it will, but we'll see. Um, the Raspberry Pi 4 I normally use, I've got it right here. You can see I've got big, huge heat sink on the front and the back, and I've got two fans and I've got it overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. That keeps it quite cool, but the Raspberry Pi 400 doesn't have a fan on it. It's just got a big um, heat sink. So we're going to see if it stays cool um, when I overclock it at 2.2 gigahertz. But let me show you some software that is um, installed by default. Of course, you have Chromium, web browser. Um, programming apps, you got uh, the Blue Jay IDE, you got Genie, that's my favorite IDE for learning how to code. Um, Java IDE, Mathematica, Moo, I love Moo. Uh, Moo is a Python editor. And let's see if it'll start up here. Yeah, all right. And so with Moo, you can write straight Python 3 code. It runs natively on the Raspberry Pi or, or any uh, system that will run Python 3. You can uh, program with Pygame Zero, which is uh, kind of an easier to use version of Pygame. You can program the BBC, BBC micro bit, which I absolutely love the micro bit, and Adafruit's Circuit Python, which is um, very similar to the micro bit. Um, over here, let's see what else we got programming. We've got uh, Scratch 1, 2, and 3, Node Red. Um, we have a Sense Hat, Sense Hat emulator. So you could kind of sort of use the Sense Hat with the um, Raspberry Pi 400 because you got the emulator right here. Um, you've also got 
Sonic Pie for making music. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I call it Thony. I don't know if it's Thony, Thony. Anyways, it's another um, Python IDE. And I also really like it because, once again, it's got everything built in. Uh, you write your code up here. You execute it. You've got a shell right down here. Um, some education apps. Uh, of course, uh, Mic or Microsoft Office. Oh, my God, really. Oh, uh, LibreOffice. Uh, internet tools, you've got Chromium web browser. I um, activated VNC. In fact, that's how I make these videos is I VNC in. Um, you've got VLC media player, uh, image viewer, games. got a bunch of little games here, including Minecraft Pi. I wonder if Minecraft Pi will run very well when I'm pegging out the uh, CPUs at 100%. All right. Anyways, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to exit out. I'm going to overclock this thing to 2.2 gigahertz, and then I will be back. I'll show you how I overclocked it, and we're going to see uh, if it stays below 80 when it's clocked to 2.2 gigahertz. Heck, we'll even see if I can just boot it up at 2.2 gigahertz. So I'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, welcome back. So what I've done is I have... Um, let me do something here okay there we go so what I did was I made a graph I essentially stress tested the uh, CPU of the Raspberry Pi 400 at 1.8 gigahertz and that's what this part of the graph shows and we're showing temperature versus time so time as we go across this direction and temperature uh, going up so this right here shows the base 1.8 gigahertz Raspberry Pi 400 um, and I stress tested all four cores running 100% the whole time. And you can see I rarely or barely even got around 55 degrees. That's a really incredible performance, actually. But I had no confidence that I could go up to 2.2 gigahertz and with no fan whatsoever. And A, it be stable. And B, it not thermally uh, throttle. Because the default Raspberry Pi 4 um, just... The, the thermals on it are not all that great. Um, like I said, I've got a giant heat sink on this and two fans, and I keep it 2.1 gigahertz. However, I was quite surprised. You can see right here, um, this dip, dip right here represents the time in which um, I um, shut it down, overclocked it, etc., and then restarted it back up. So you can see that um, this is about a, oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I stress tested it. Anyways, we never got above about, oh, 65 degrees or so. It stayed rock steady, 65 degrees, never got anywhere close to 80 degrees. And in fact, a good portion of this, I was doing other stuff um, while the stress test was going on. So absolutely incredible, absolutely amazing that it could stay well below 80 degrees where the Raspberry Pi begins to um, thermally throttle um, with no fan, no fan at all. And I felt the Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard while I was doing this. I expected maybe to, it, it would feel really hot. Now, on the bottom, it was quite warm. But on the top, where you're typing, very comfortable. Didn't feel, um, you know, hot a a at all. So I was incredibly impressed with that. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, I wanted to show you how to uh, overclock it if you were wanting to do that. So let me uh, shut this graph down. Uh, sure, I'll save. No, I'm not going to save. <laughs> uh, don't save. Okay. So all you got to do to overclock your Raspberry Pi 400 is you're going to issue the command sudo nano slash boot slash config dot txt. And you're going to scroll down. And if you never use Nano, it's a really incredibly simple uh, text editor. You can just use your keyboard to type like normal. And down here, uh, this means Control. So if you want to uh, write it out, if you want to save it, you do Control O, um, and then hit Control X to exit, etc. So there's going to be a section. I need to scroll up right here. It says uncomment to overclock the arm. 700 megahertz is the default. So you're going to find this section right here, and you're going to change it so it looks like this. You have Force underscore Turbo equals one over underscore voltage equals 8, and arm underscore freak equals 2200, and that's going to overclock you to 
2.2 gigahertz. And I have to tell you, the Raspberry Pi 400 at 2.2 gigahertz is an incredibly smooth experience. No, you know, it's no, you know, 4 gigahertz Intel CPU or AMD Ryzen CPU. But um, it is quite quite usable as a uh, desktop if you needed to do that. Now you're not going to have 16, um, you know, tabs open and streaming uh, multiple YouTube videos or anything like that. But um, I'm really, really impressed. So for $100, see if I can move this up here. All right. Uh, so for $100, this right here, 100 bucks gets you everything that you need. SD card. It gets you the um, power supply. Gets you the Raspberry Pi 400 keyboard, um, HDMI cables, everything that you need. It's ready to go. You just plug it all in and uh, plug it into your monitor and it's set up. It's ready to go. Absolutely incredible, amazing deal for $100. And for $70, for $70 you can get just a keyboard. Um, you'll have to supply your own power supply, mouse, etc. To me, this this really comes closest or closer to realizing the original dreams and goals of the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, to put a, a cheap, inexpensive computer into the hands of people uh, so that they can learn how to code. Absolutely amazing. I highly recommend it. Um, and I highly recommend that you do something else. <laughs> I highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel and please like the video. I really appreciate it. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And once again, today was a great day to learn how to code. Even though we didn't do any coding today, um, you can use Raspberry Pi 400 to uh, learn how to code. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.